Hi, I'm Ardeth, and today I've got a double stencil technique to share with you. Think you're seeing double? That was last week. This is a new video, and this time I'm showing how I made four cards with some double stencil techniques using my Stencils 360 tool from Penguin Palace Stamps. First, let me show you a couple of tips I have for the tool itself. I have an extra self-healing cutting mat, and I taped the Stencils 360 base to it. I positioned it so the grid on the mat is centered, and that helps me with positioning of my cardstock when I'm using sizes I don't have paper guides for. It's slightly taller than the height of my mat, and that gives me a little space and wiggle room to make it easy to lift out the paper guides and stencil guides when I'm done each time. I can store the whole thing in my drawer when I'm not using it and easily put it back on my desk when I need it, so this arrangement is working for me for now. For my first card, I started with my cardstock centered on the mat, and I'm using the smallest stencil in the Sacred Lotus set and the 4 inch stencil guide. I blended Flirty Fuchsia ink through, and then I turned the stencil, following the heart markings, which give 22 and a half degree angles. If you're new to this tool, I've linked my introduction video above so you can see all my detailed tips and instructions for using it. I'm using the small Altenew blending tools that are sold in packs of four, but any ink blending tools you have will work. For my ink blending, I like to use brushes rather than sponges through stencils, since I think they hold up better with less damage. After a full rotation, I lift the stencil and I've got this pretty flower with overlapping petals. I want to try and get a layer technique like I had in last week's video, so I grabbed the Midnight Mandala stencil from Open Studios and I sprayed it with Pixie Spray before placing it on top of my flower. This stencil will work because it has a circular design in it that will be pretty with that lotus flower. I was very careful to make sure that the center of this second stencil was lined up with the center of the flower and that the pattern was symmetrical by checking where it landed on each petal. Then I put the lotus stencil back over top and I grabbed some drive-in ink. This darker ink will give me the look of lighter lines where the mandala stencil is covering the fuchsia flower. And here's what I learned while I was doing this. The mandala stencil is forcing the lotus stencil and the stencil guide to be a little higher or further away from the paper than usual. This isn't a problem as long as you're aware that it's happening. I just pressed down with my fingers to make sure that everything was staying in place while I blended the drive-in ink through the doubled up stencils. When I remove the stencils, you can see the effect of the darker ink through the two stencils. It gives a beautiful, intricate tone-on-tone -tone look. To finish this card, I trimmed the panel with two circle dies to create a frame. I stamped a Concord and Ninth birthday sentiment on a white circle for the center, and I popped the frame and the circle up on a black background. At this point, I had achieved what I set out to do, but I started wondering about different stencil combinations. For this card, I started with the larger lotus stencil, and I moved my cardstock so that I'll get half a flower design. I could have used a larger piece of cardstock and created a two-for-one background, but my focus was on trying different combinations, and not knowing what I would get, I decided to do it like this. The first thing I learned here is that if you want to alternate your colors on the petals, it's much easier to use one of the petals for one color, and one for the other color. I used the solid versus the outlined square shapes on the base to help me skip the other color petals, and that saved me quite a bit of cleaning of the stencils. It looks a little awkward here, but trust me, I got really good at it as I kept working. I used Serenade and Be Mine ink. Okay, so that's the first layer. This time I'm going to use the Catherine Pooler Twisted Sunburst stencil as my second layer. I could see I didn't want the outside frame showing up in my blending, so I had to move the stencil up a bit and that meant that the two centers are not perfectly aligned this time. I'll just have to build that into my final card design later. Again, this stencil has pixie spray on it, and I pressed it down so it won't slip as I blend the ink through. I put the lotus stencil back in place, and I used drive-in ink on top of the serenade petals, using my clever little system of skipping the pink petals. Then I went back and put pucker up on top of the pink petals, skipping the purple ones. This time, when I lift the stencil, I get a really neat, almost 3D look on this flower. I love the difference between the two shades of the same color, but you could try the same ink twice for a more subtle look, or a completely different color to get a blended look. To finish this card, I cut out that mismatched center and I replaced it with a white half circle that I had stamped with another Concord and Ninth sentiment. And then I wondered about doubling up with two circle stencils. I'll show you my process quickly because it does work, but when I got to the end, I thought of a much better way. 
I'll skip the first layer since it's the same as the last card, but this time I used Dosey -Si Doe and Catching Rays inks. I grabbed one of the fireworks stencils and I flipped over my stencil guide and I centered the stencil and taped it onto the lotus stencil. I flipped it back over and blended the darker shades of ink through it. This time it was Coral Cabana and Tiki Torch. At this point I realized that I could have just used the 6 inch stencil guide for that fireworks stencil and gotten a similar look. Anyway, it's pretty and to finish this one, I cut a sentiment strip out of the panel and I added a thank you sentiment from that same Concord and Ninth set. Even though I figured out there was a better way to make that card, it did give me the idea of taping the stencils together and that led me to my next card. Again, I'll skip the first layer. This time it's Cummerbund and Melon Ice, which is such a pretty combination. This time I'm going to use the Deco Fan Stencil from Catherine Pooler. It's not long enough to cover both the petal holes at once, so I'll just do one at a time. I lined up the pattern into the first hole, making sure it's symmetrical, and then I taped the stencil in place. I flipped the whole thing back over and I blended Lime Ricky ink through to the Melon Ice petals. Again, I had that issue with the bulk of the two stencils, but this time, for whatever reason, it also pushed the round stencil guide up high enough that it was slipping out of the base a couple of times. Fortunately, it's really easy to just use the marks on the guide and the base to get everything lined up again. Look how pretty this is. I thought about just leaving it with the pattern on half the petals, but I figured I better just finish it off so I would know how it looked. I cleaned the stencil, repositioned it over the other petal, and then I put it in place and blended Fiesta Blue ink onto the Cummerbund petals. To finish this one, I used an oval die and I placed it to cut a curve over the top of my pattern. I used a smaller sentiment stamped three times around the curve. Sometimes the days where we sit down and just play with our supplies are the ones where we end up with the most surprising results. I loved seeing how each card led to the next one. I certainly learned a lot in this little session, and I'm excited that I found another way to use the Stencils 360 tool with all my other stencils. I can already see that there's more exploring to do. If you're curious about the tool, I've linked my Stencils 360 playlist in the description below, along with all the products I used, at least the ones that are still current. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time!